Today, we're in the shop. It's so cold outside, I can't work on any equipment. Minus 20 feels like minus 30. I'm sure some of you are feeling it also. Today, we're gonna be doing something that I used to be extremely good at and haven't done in a long time, and that's some body and paint work. Unfortunately, it's not for a hot rod. It's actually for my John Deere 450 excavator. This machine was in super rough condition when I first bought it, so it's time to get these body panels fixed up and get this machine looking good. There's a total of three body panels we have to repair. One of them we just have to modify slightly, and then we also have one larger panel we have to make up from scratch. This top hood corner just needs to be pounded out, body filled, and then painted. This panel that covers the radiator needs a good amount of work. You can see a tree darted in, damn near took out the radiator. We'll have to remove each one of these sheet metal pieces, straighten them out and get them welded back in. We'll also body fill this and get it painted. This here is the main hood cover. As you can see, it is in very bad condition. There's cracks in the sheet metal everywhere, the braces are broken, this needs a good amount of work. This panel here covers the hydraulic pumps on the cab side. I never actually put this on just because I had an overheating issue with the machine to begin with. So what we'll do is actually cut out some panels for the air to flow through and cool that pump. Thought some of the other panels were in rough condition? Let me show you a picture of this. I just used the original top and the braces and just reskinned from the curve down. The first panel we'll start off with is this corner hood panel. This is probably the easiest over the bunch, so we'll hammer it out quickly. This sheet metal is 14 gauge. It's a lot thicker than what I'm used to. For hot rods, I use 18 gauge. And automotive stuff nowadays is typically 20 to 22 gauge steel. Now we just need a hammer and some dollies. There's a rule of thumb for pounding out a dent and that's first in, last out. You can see this is the impact area. So this will be the last area to pound out. Typically human nature is just to come in with a sledgehammer or a large hammer and just force that out. That's the wrong way of doing it. We'll use the heavier hammer on the backside as a dolly and use the dead blow to hammer down the high spots. With the top roughed out, now we can concentrate on these areas. This crease right here is actually locking in this dent, so we'll gradually work this out and work ourselves into the center. Look how easy that corner came out. Knowing where to start on pounding out a dent will save you lots of work in the end. So next up, I wanna smooth some of these factory lines out. This just looks like they put it in a sheet metal break. So we'll choose our proper dolly. That's our shape that we want, and we'll go through and smooth those out. Also, this little wow right here, we'll also hammer that out with a smaller hammer and dolly. This is pretty flimsy, but that's just because of this crack. We'll weld that up right now. That's good enough for the rough out. We'll remove the paint later on and fine tune it. So, let's move on to the next panel. I have to cut each one of these out. The weld is in a really crappy area, so what I'll do is probably just slice it there and weld it back in later on. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna mark these out. First one's not too bad, just a slight bend. Second one, a little bit worse. Third one, not too bad. Fourth one, just a little bit tweaked. Now they start to get a little bit more interesting. Number six. So you can see we have this relatively straight now, but we have one problem. We actually have a banana to this. So I have a machine that actually will fix this. These two machines shrink and stretch steel. With a stretcher, when you press the pedal down, it moves a set of dies and it will stretch the sheet metal. With the shrinker, same thing, you press down the pedal and it'll grab the steel and move it inward. While these two machines thaw out, we'll go and straighten out the other fins. This is number seven, probably the worst of the bunch. And then finally, the last one. Before we go straightening those, I'll show you an exaggerated visual of what's gonna happen. You stick it in the machine, push the lever down, and there you go. And then for the shrinking side, there, that's the shrink and that's the stretch. If a person's trying to tackle this at home and you don't have these machines, you don't need one. 
What you can do is just slice with a zip cut, reshape it, and then weld it back. This just is a lot quicker than doing it that way. We have all eight pieces done. Now we just need to tackle the outer frame. You can see how tweaked this thing is. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use a shrinker stretcher right here. I'll have to cut it, relieve that, straighten it out and weld it up. With all the fins and brace welded back in, there's one small dent that we have to remove. A stud gun will not pull that out due to the thickness. It is an eighth of an inch thick and those studs will never hold up. So what we have to do is take a zip cut, pry it up, straighten it out and then re-weld it. So I ended up cutting that piece out. It was just too thick to sit there and try and pry it straight. So that door is pretty much done. On to the nasty one. So starting with something as bad as this, you just gotta tackle it. To stop this panel from bouncing around while I'm trying to repair it, I just need to weld up a couple little brackets. Now that we have a couple of the braces and stuff tacked together, it's a lot more rigid. So we'll whip up some hood corners on both sides. These are just too ratty to go through and try and repair. For doing sheet metal repair, I do a technique called a lap and cut. So I'll lay this over top, I'll zip cut it, and then I end up with a perfect root gap to fill with weld. That root gap allows for perfect penetration from the front side to the back side. I'll quickly weld up all these cracks in this hood and weld these corners in fully. When welding the center sheet metal, it's very tricky to not have it warp. What I do is go through and tack every inch, and then I'll go back and tack in between each tack. This prevents too much heat from building up and warping the panel. If you see the panel start to warp, just take a hammer and dolly. Hammer your welds and it'll straight note, then you can continue welding. I went ahead and added a bunch of additional gusseting from factory, even this piece of pipe on the bottom, just so it doesn't crack again. I got the corner patches welded up and the 8 billion cracks that this hood had. These things were everywhere. To finalize the hood before body work, we need to get rid of some of these high spots. There's one there, one there, and one over in the corner. So what we have to do is heat shrink. We'll use a stud gun for the heat. We have our air blower and a hammer and dolly. What we have to do is create a large amounts of heat. See it starts to get red hot. And we'll take the hammer dolly. Hammer around it. And cool it with air. This one you can see is really bad. This needs a lot of shrinking. So I'll put you guys on time warp and you can watch that go down. That took about a dozen shrinks to get down to where we need it. Now we can finish hammer and dolling it and get it ready for body filler. With all the sheet metal repaired, we now have to remove the paint. We can now put some body filler on everything. Ugh, hello, my stinky old friend. It's been a while. This is a polyester body filler that we'll be using for smoothing out the panels. It's gross, it stinks, it's dusty. I really don't miss it.
With the body filler all hard, we can sand this down. We'll knock off the high spots with some 80 grit and then turn to hand sanding. Let's make some dust. That's good enough for the rough out with the machine. As soon as you start to see some high spots coming through, you want to stop, finish that off by hand sanding it. Also corners, a machine cuts down too fast, so typically you want to hand sand those also. With all the surfaces knocked down using the bigger machine, we'll start hand sanding some of these corners with a hand block. Choose your weapon. For round corners, for round corners like this, I use a real soft block so you can go around the curve really easily. Then we'll also use this long block and hit all the flat surfaces. We'll also do the same with this panel, 80 grit on a long block, straighten this out. With the first coat of body filler sanded down, you can see some low spots. So we'll have to mix up some more body filler and apply it on those areas. While we're waiting for this body filler to kick off, I'm just gonna have to quickly fix this hand railing. This guy's in really rough condition. You gotta take that bend out, that bend out, and another one down there. So what I'll do is go through, I'll zip cut it, straighten it out, and re-weld it. With that all straightened out, we just have to weld on the original perches. That's where it broke off. That one goes there. And that one goes on that end. Well, there's the hand railing. I doubt it's gonna fit, but we might have to cut it and tweak it once we're out at the site. It's currently under about 10 feet of snow. We'll have to put it together in the springtime. With the body filler all dry, we'll use some 80 grit, chop this down, and she'll be ready for primer. And then the big guy, we'll have to use the machine to knock down some of this high stuff. The last thing we have to do is back sand these areas with 320. When we spray the primer, we don't want that primer to go onto shiny paint. All right, it's the day after. The primer is all dried up. We can sand this stuff down. So we'll use some 320 grit on the long block and start sanding it. The last thing we need to do is take some 600 grit on the orbital and go over the entire panel. We need to knock down some of this orange peel so the paint goes on smooth. Now that these three panels are all prepped up, we can turn to some of these modifications. I already took the liberty of cutting these out with the plasma cutter. I didn't film it just in case it did go haywire on me, but it actually turned out pretty good. So what I have to do is just feather this edge back. Those plasma cutters cut really cold so it doesn't even burn the paint. We will also go through and prep this up with 600 grit for the new paint to stick to. And then the one panel that we have to build from scratch goes right behind the boom of the excavator. This panel wasn't on the machine when I got it, so we have to whip one up from scratch. This is a piece of 14 gauge. It's quite flimsy for this large panel, so we'll build a perimeter with this material that I bent up already and add some structure to it. So here's our piece of catwalk all ready. All we have to do is get some paint on it. So I've blown all the dust out of the shop, I've blown these panels off, and I've also gone ahead and wiped these down with a pre-cleaner for painting. The only thing left to do is take a tack rag and tack the dust off. Even though these panels have been blown off and wiped down, look at, there's still a little bit of dust on it. So these tack rags actually will remove that dust for us. 
The paint that we'll be using today is an industrial speed enamel. This paint is quite thick and it's actually made to spray through an industrial sprayer called an airless sprayer. I personally don't like the finish that they give, so I'll be spraying it through my automotive spray gun. To spray it through a gun like that, this paint has to be reduced. I use a xylene and I usually do around 10 to 20% and then I end up with a perfect viscosity. We'll pour this paint into another container so it's more manageable. Also, when spraying this kind of paint, an activated charcoal respirator must be used. So that's the first coat of paint. We'll let that sit and dry for five minutes. And we'll go in and do a second coat. So this speed enamel dries super fast. This is literally about five minutes later after I've sprayed it. So it's the morning after and these panels are all cured up. There's a couple small things we have to do like put some grip tape on this catwalk piece and paint that hand railing. Don't know if that's going to fit just yet so we'll wait until springtime. I'd love to go and put these on right now but that machine is probably under about 10 feet of snow. With these panels all done it's time to kick them outside and get on to the next project. On the next episode we'll be going over something that a lot of people have asked me questions about and that's my cleanup sluice. After that first video I uploaded on YouTube, I had a lot of questions about this unit. So what I'm going to do is not build one, not two, but three of these. Another bonus is that we'll see how much gold I left in this thing after my last cleanup. Might be a couple of grams, might be three, four, hard to say. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.